Hi, my name is Leon Roque, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And welcome to this week's supply and demand for us and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead, starting the 15th of April. Hope you all had a great trading week. And if you like the analysis that I provide every week, every Sunday, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the videos with your trading colleagues. And so, um, this week, getting into the week ahead, uh, and this is from tradingeconomics.com. So investors' focus will be on retail sales figures and speeches by Federal Reserve officials, followed by building permits, housing starts, and existing home sales. In China, attention will be on the Q3 GDP rate, uh, industrial production, retail sales, house prices, and fixed asset investments. And uh, China's mentioned really because um, China's recovery is important to the to the world and also as well to currencies. <clears throat> and if you have a, a growing um, China, China start to recover and actually get into their kind of recovery expansion phase of their economic cycle, um, then in fact it can have a, a, a massive effect on uh, currencies like the dollar. And actually, the dollar will end up um, weakening. Uh, but we've seen the dollar actually strengthening uh, for, for for various reasons, various fundamental reasons, which we'll go into a bit later. But always worth keeping an eye on uh, China and what their what their economy is doing when taking trades. Anyways, um, in the UK, markets will follow inflation rate, unemployment rate, and retail sales. Also, inflation data will be released for Canada, New Zealand, and Japan. That's really important because at the moment, um, if you're not aware, uh, inflation um, is, a, is a deciding factor as to whether um, central banks will be cutting rates or holding rates. And so the quicker it comes down to their 2% target is the more likely they are to cut. And the central bank that is looking to cut first versus the central bank that is looking to hold for longer, you want to sell the one that is cutting first and uh, really kind of buy the one that is holding for longer. So, um, so we're looking at, uh, finally, Japan, Euro area and Switzerland will release foreign trade data Germany ZEW economic sentiment indicator and Australia's labour market figures. So pretty busy week uh, for data for the major currencies. Now, uh, getting into some trade analysis and the trade that we took this week, which was on the euro dollar. So um, the euro dollar was a short for me, and it's always been a short. It's been a short for quite a while, matter of fact. Um I've kind of had a negative bias, and I say negative, but a short bias on the uh, euro dollar. I've been waiting to get involved in this in in the short, and finally, you know, I managed to get an opportunity, and it played out. Not necessarily a textbook trade, and but I guess I'll explain it. So um, again, fundamentally, um, I wanted to be a buyer of the uh, the dollar, and uh, this week was a was a critical week, especially because of uh, CPI data right that came out on the i think it was a tuesday was it was it a tuesday it was the yeah the tuesday that's what everyone was waiting for this week so um in the uh in the, in the uh, mentoring group uh we were waiting for this and as well as the market right the whole everyone was waiting for this if you understand you know fundamentals and data and um what had happened is, is that inflation rate actually came out higher than expected and what that you know means is that the or what that meant was that the federal reserve uh were going to uh hold likely to hold rates for longer so rate cuts are, were being priced out of the market which should appreciate the currency and so um uh, the day before, uh, on the Monday, I had seen a um, a bit of a stop hunt above the level. If we go down into the one hour, uh, here was the uh, stop hunt, which was basically has been circled, right? That was the stop hunt there. But it wasn't a stop hunt that I could really kind of get involved in, in terms of there's a specific criteria that I'm looking for with the stop hunt, which it really didn't meet in my book, although, you know, you can still take, uh, you can still take uh, those types of stop hunts, but I didn't take it based really on that. 
it was really based off of um, a candlestick time frame that I look at, which is the 18 hour. And it was like a, there was a divergence that was going on. So I use an RSI divergence. I don't necessarily put it on um, on here uh, for the uh, Sunday videos, but um, I use the RSI. And one of the entries I've been looking at um, over the past few months is uh, divergences. And so it's just an entry trigger, really. That's all I'm really looking for. And I saw the entry trigger because the direction is just short, right? So I'm not looking for divergences long and short, just looking for divergences uh, as an entry trigger or one of the entry triggers that I use on um, uh, on the euro dollar. So I was looking for a short trade where you have the RSI is 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 um, not making higher highs or making lower highs and lower lows. And you've got the price action doing the opposite where it's making higher highs and higher lows, right? So um, that's what I saw here. Saw it on the 18 hour. Uh, this was my entry and um, I took off uh, about 75% uh, profits at around about a two to one, somewhere around here um, from that one position. I only managed to get in on one position. So many of you know that I, uh, you know, split my total risk up into three, uh, but I only managed to get in on a market order, which it didn't pull back enough to get in on a second position, unfortunately. Um, so when the data came out, uh, managed to bank some profits and then I've let the rest run. So um, I took off again 70, about 75 percent off, about uh, three quarters off uh, that position. And now I've got a quarter running, which is just going to I'm going to let it swing trade. And I've also trailed my stop down as well to around the 107.50s, just uh, just below there, I think 107.40s. Um, so, yeah, so that's basically the trade. Um, at the moment, and um, I'm still in the uh, the uh, yen, euro yen short, as well as the CAD yen short, and those trades are now in a profitable position. So, um, yeah, uh, the fundamentals are actually working out, and um, yeah, that was basically the uh, the trade uh, analysis for this week, and also from last week. Uh, many of you, if you watched the video, I'm in. Um, I'm still in the uh, the natural gas uh, long trade. I haven't been stopped out of that again. I took majority of profits off. Uh, got about a quarter of position on and um, trailed my stop up, but it hasn't stopped my trailing stop uh, out yet. So everything's looking good in terms of uh, trades over the past uh, week or so. So euro dollar, nice trade, and we'll get into some of the again some bit more fundamentals. Um, uh, uh, right now, so looking at the dollar index, looking at it on from a daily perspective, the uh, the dollar index. This is an equally weighted dollar index. I'll leave the uh, video uh, which explains why you should use equally weighted uh, indexes and why I use it anyway um, uh, with with my trading and why it's a better way to uh, to kind of uh, see what the strength of the dollar is overall against the uh, you know currencies that you're trading and um again now really the bias is really just to wait for buys on pullbacks for the dollar i think um the market i say i think but i know the market is pricing in um you know uh, uh, rate cuts in in september now it looks like you know maybe july to september rather than june and so they're holding for longer essentially which means that i think if the dollar index pulls back to any of these zones um for me uh, they are potential buying opportunities so let's see what happens there technically uh fundamentally you know it says us inflation quashes the chances of a june Fed rate cuts. The US inflation came out at 0.4% month for month for the third consecutive month, more than double the rate we need to consistently hit to bring inflation down to the 2% year on year. Expectations for a June Federal Reserve interest rate cut have collapsed with the higher for longer narrative on rates firmly in place. September is going to be the earliest opportunity for any policy easing. And that's pretty much, you know, the market uh, sentiment at the moment. So, um, so there's that. Um, so for me, that is really the uh, uh, the play, the direction of travel for now. And um, yeah, if there's some confluence on the dollar index, especially like somewhere around here where you've got, um, where you'll have, 
you know, some support and resistance within that area of, uh, you know, demand, then that is also a nice uh, technical level to look for, um, you know, trades if prices come down there then you're looking for long trades on the uh, dollar crosses right if you want to go long on the dollar um dollar yen uh, so this level finally broke uh, last week and uh, we do have uh, the market and prices on the dollar yen uh, you know making uh, higher highs now got to be careful with trying to first of all buying at highs is not something i'd ever advise anyone to do but if you are that type of trader who likes to buy expensive prices, um, just be mindful that the uh, higher prices go is the more the um, Bank of Japan are likely to intervene to try and devalue their currency, right? Um, they actually don't want a weak yen at the moment because it adds to inflation pressures. And so um, it says here that Japan's five-year yield rises to highest since 2011 on BOJ bets, so deepening yen weakness fans speculation of BOJ rate hikes. So a rate hike is the 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 uh, intention of a rate hike is to appreciate the currency. That's what is supposed to happen when they want to hike rates, right? When they hike rates, um, and so everything is pointing towards intervention and rate hikes at the moment. Um, and it has here, yield curve has shifted higher amid persistent inflation. So inflation is going higher. And uh, last week, we went over this as well in terms of the uh, relationship between bond yields and um, and interest rates. And so um, ultimately, bond yields going higher is an indication that inflation is likely rising. Therefore, if inflation is rising, then interest rates should want to also rise too. And so you're seeing bond yields overall. It says here Jap uh, Japan's yields have risen, uh, you know, have risen across the curve this year, right? And so they just keep, you know, rising and rising. The bond yields, the two-year, the five-year, the 10-year, the 30-year, all keep going higher and higher, which is an indication that um, bond traders are, um, you know, thinking that, Inflation is going to rise, therefore, interest rates are likely to also rise. And so, uh, with that being said, just be mindful if you are looking to buy at, at highs because ultimately the higher this goes. And I've seen uh, some uh, banks like Goldman Sachs say that it should reach 155, and that's, that could be a target. And of course, it could reach 155, but at any minute, you could see um, the Bank of Japan and Ministry of Finance you know, uh, intervene and push the market down. And that's when you start to see those large volatile moves. So just be mindful that that is happening. Also as well, um, uh, we do have, we are in a risk off environment, right? So um, the uh, front uh, page, I guess, of the of Reuters and Bloomberg is all about Iran seizing Israel linked container ship near Homer's Straits, right? So tensions are increasing uh, between, you know, Iran and Israel. And so um, historically, the yen has actually is actually a, seen as a as a, a, a safe haven currency. And actually, so is the the uh, the dollar. But um, over the past few years, I don't think the yen has really acted as a safe haven currency, but it could do at any minute. And that is also reason to just be mindful if you are looking to buy um, at highs. Now, one of the things I would do is put a demand zone somewhere around here. So if you are looking to buy um, the dollar yen wait for a pull back into that zone there and then look for a trade to the upside that should probably be the level um but again that would have to happen uh and it not be in the face of intervention right it'd have to probably slowly start to drift down and then look for long trades if you're looking to take that play but i'm not looking to take this just yet i'm interested oh, i said i'm looking to take this short really when the um the u.s dollar and the Fed um, start to cut rates. I think this is going to be a very good trade to the downside, but let's see when that happens, right? No one knows when, but um, once the uh, inflation for the dollar starts to 
cool and head towards their 2%, then I'm going to be all over this on a short uh, dollar CAD. So dollar CAD, um, zooming out a bit on the daily. Again, we got the really good news uh, this week for the for the dollar. Um, if you are dollar longs, it was good news. Um, and it just blasted through these levels. Now, I always say, if you've uh, paid attention to me for any length of time, is that there is no technical level that's going to stand in the way of fundamental analysis. You know, price charts really um, should really just be used to understand where price is. And if you obviously use, you know, pattern recognition and things like that, but just looking at where bargains likely are. And obviously, um, uh, if you've got a level, you know, whether it's support or resistance or supply and demand, if the fundamentals say that, you know, the value is going to be higher than, you know, or lower than that, that technical level, then it's just not going to, you know, no technical level that's going to stand in the way of any type of um, fundamental analysis because fundamentals is what drives the market, right? We know this, although some people uh, refuse to admit it. So, um, again, we've got some supply zones here and here. But ultimately, the, the path of least resistance should be to the upside. So you're really looking for pullbacks on this trade. That would be where I would look for uh, for some uh, my direction is looking for something like that. Or if prices make higher highs like this, like a, you know, a, a higher low and a higher high, then you're looking for a pullback into that higher low because that would be the new demand zone. And then you look for a trade in and around that zone there. Uh, pound dollar again. Pound dollar this uh, this week um, uh, again uh, uh, affected by what's happened with the dollar. We've got some supply zones here as well as um, I guess demand where we are now and demand just below here. Uh, the pound this week. Uh, does have some news coming out, but last week we did have the UK economy growing for a second month as recovery takes hold. So manufacturing and services both stronger than expected, and January's reading or January's reading also revised up from first estimates. So good news. There was some good news for the uh, for the pound. But we've got some, I think we've got some inflation data this week, if I remember correctly. Some inflation data and, um, yeah, it says, uh, yeah, UK markets will follow inflation rate and unemployment rate and uh, also retail sales. So unemployment and, and inflation data is going to be key to uh, whether the pound will continue to, um, to uh, you know, rise. And I wouldn't necessarily buy the pound against something like the, uh, the dollar. I'd probably buy the pound against something like the um, the Swiss franc, for example, or, or the euro, um, weaker currencies, the ones that are really kind of cutting first. So um, I'm not necessarily too keen on trading this, but if you are, you can look for some long trades either now or just further down if prices come down into that demand zone, if you think that's going to be a bargain for the pound against the, uh, the dollar. If you think that the pound is a sell against the dollar, then I think the first area uh, should be really around uh, this uh, 12578 to 12542, somewhere around there, three nines, four forties. So that's really your options at the moment. Um, Pound yen, the pound yen, again, if there is some sort of intervention, uh, the pound should roll over um, and an intervention from, from Bank of Japan. But also as well, if there is um, news supporting lower inflation and higher unemployment, then I think that should want to roll over to the downside f even further. So prices did come up to this area of supply and then eventually rolled over, but we are in this a bit of an auction now where you've got prices um, right between here and here. And let's just use that. So yeah, prices within this auction here, this range. And so it will break out of the range if the, um, if obviously the fundamentals uh, say that prices should be uh, lower this week. So uh, if you are looking to buy it, now is actually a decent time uh, technically. Uh, but if you're looking for continued sales, then you really have to look for prices to kind of move up to that supply zone before looking at going short. So I draw the supply zone from around there. Yeah, the 192.02.02.02. 192 
six four. Um, yeah, we've covered the euro dollar earlier um, from a uh, from a supply daily supply zone perspective. If you are if you missed out on this trade and want to get uh, short on this, then um, you've really got a long way to go. Right, I don't don't know whether prices are really going to pull back to the one hundred eight fifties anytime soon. Of course, anything can happen in you know in forex and trading, but um, uh, I don't think anything like that is likely to happen. Uh, you do have, is that, did that break through? Yeah, that kind of broke through that level now. So I would say we're in a bit of no man's land at the moment. Um, probably you could look for, if you know how to trade stop hunts and you want to get long on this, don't know why you would want to get long, but if you are looking for some sort of trade, then that's, that's a, maybe a, a level that could have the potential to be stop hunted if you know how to trade stop hunts, but or in a way that we do, right? Because everyone has their own method of trading uh, stop hunts or identifying them. But um, for now, from a daily uh, um, supply zone, you're really waiting, are waiting for prices to pull back there or prices to make lower highs and lower lows, and then for prices to pull back to that lower high, because then that would be level of supply so right there would be what you're looking towards in terms of going short um and that's really the direction of travel um the euro uh and the, really the one of the biggest bigger reasons as well um for the euro's decline across the board is that um uh, euro's five month low fuels talk of parity on ECB Fed Fed split, right? So strategists see uh, drop to 105s or lower before ECB June meeting and escalating geopolitical risks add to euro dollar downside. So as I was saying before about, you know, with the uh, Iran Israel tensions, um, the dollar adds um, is, is used as a, a safe haven currency, whereas the euro isn't. And um, also as well, the fact that the um, the Fed are now likely to uh, cut in September, whereas the the uh, ECB are likely to you know cut in June. There's a there's a bigger divergence there, right? In terms of you know leading who's leading and who's lagging, as I was talking about at the beginning of this video, this analysis. So that's what's being priced in the 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 uh, the fact that. The uh, the uh, the U European Central Bank are likely to cut first by several months before the Federal Reserve. So that's why you've seen the move just sell off like this. And um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, it for me. The euro is definitely not a buy any time soon. Euro yen finally rolling over. Uh, made a bit of money on this too. Took some uh, some profits off and uh, just waiting for really. Um, uh, one more position to uh, um, swing trading one position now. So, yeah, decent, decent, decent um, uh, trade finally played out. Took a while to play out. Took a few weeks, matter of fact. But ultimately, let's see what happens. So, again, I would more likely be short on this. If we do get a larger pullback, look for probably another entry. Or maybe even if you get a stop hunt above that level, that would be what I'd be looking for to re-enter into a short on this trade because I really don't think prices are going to go any higher than that um, at the moment. It doesn't look like it anyway. So that's where we are. And um, if you are looking for a buy trade, you can look for a buy trade right now as we are in that demand zone. In fact, it, touched, it peaked that demand zone there. So I can actually delete that and look for any kind of trades from from now. Sorry, from now, if you are looking at buying the uh, the euro against the yen euro pound so again depending really what happens this week with the pound um i think there is an opportunity potentially actually if you were going to buy the euro uh, it may be against the pound if the pound has some bad news so that could be a decent area to look for a trade uh, you also have a bit of a stop hunt below these levels um, so that could be actually a decent um, uh, trade to the long side if it does stop hunt. But um, euro pound, I would think that if the if the pound uh, data is positive, um, 
in terms of the uh, the Bank of England uh, holding rates for longer, then the path of least resistance should really be to the downside. So you should look for, I would say, probably more shorting opportunities on here. So wait for a pullback up into a zone and then look for uh, a trade right there. So that would be the actually matter of fact. There is a supply zone right there. So that'd be the first supply zone you look towards to try to uh, uh, short this currency pair based really on the data. Uh, Aussie dollar, US dollar. So this is sold off a bit. Again, the, 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 the US dollar being the, uh, the stronger out of the two at the moment. So that's really where you're looking at um, the, the latest demand zone, another demand zone below there in case you are looking to buy this currency pair. I'm not looking to buy this at all um, or even trade this. Uh, I think there's much better pairs out there. But if you are one of those people who want to get involved in this, either long or short, uh, these are the levels that you're looking for. Either a, uh, you can look for probably a buy trade right now. Technically, that's actually very nice. I do like this. This is a, what's known as a capture pain relief trade. Um, but again, um, there's no point in taking technical trades against fundamental analysis. Makes no sense, um, especially when you've got you know two currencies that are quite um, that are looking to uh, cut rates at the same time. So um, you could look at this as prices could want to uh, auction, meaning they could want to range. But um, yeah, I'd rather look for clearer divergences. Um, so if you're looking for a buy trade, that could be one. Or we're looking for a sell trade either uh, in that supply zone or in the higher supply zone. But not really interested in taking this at all. And then we've got gold. Gold just kept making new highs. Again, this is from last week's analysis, looking for a bit of a pullback. If you were looking to buy gold, um, we've had this large bearish pin bar so that could be something maybe could be profit taking who knows right but at the end of the day um uh, gold over the medium to long term should still continue to be a buy uh, there was uh, some analysis on gold it says gold slips after topping two thousand four hundred dollars an ounce as rally is seen oh as over extended so we've got again israel braces for political retali retaliatory attack from iran so risk uh, off and traders weigh geopolitical tensions with interest rate outlook. So, um, yeah, gold um, is really doing its thing. But there was something in here, and it says that we uh, we do feel that mark the market is has become overextended, and that will lead to a liquidation selling. Right, so people want to profit take. Said Philip Newman, managing director at Consultancy Metals Focus. Any liquidations. Any corrections would be short-lived and should present a very strong buying opportunity. So basically, you want to buy on pullbacks, right? Um, so, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, oh, here was something interesting as well. The precious metals has... Uh, no, uh, where is it now? It says here, it's rally and often outside moves have left some onlookers puzzled because of the lack of any obvious triggers, uh, particularly the outlook for interest rate cuts by the Federal Reserve has become muddier in recent weeks. So you would really think, you know, you've got gold moving in the same direction as the uh, the US dollar, right? So if you zoom out, you've had the US dollar index move to the upside, right? Beginning of 2024, Right, and this is why correlations are never one hundred percent. You really should know the fundamentals. You can't just rely, in my opinion, anyway. Some people do, of course, good for you. But um, this is where traders typically end up getting caught out because there are times where the dollar, right, or, or, or typically inverse correlated pairs or uh, assets and asset classes, right, can actually still move in the same direction. And so you'll see in that beginning of the year, you'll see in this beginning of the year, right? Both going higher. And so uh, gold is obviously going um, higher uh, based off of geo, you know, political tensions, as well as um, the expectation for rate uh, cuts this year. But yet you've got the dollar doing the exact same thing, right? Which is, um, again, a bit confusing, a bit baffling as this, uh, this article was saying, right, especially because, um, you know, there's no obvious triggers for gold to really continue to kind of, you know, uh, 
go to the moon, right? In terms of uh, you know, because because the uh, Federal Reserve haven't cut rates yet. In fact, they've they've just continued to push cuts um, out uh, further and further into the future. So um, yeah, I just wanted to highlight really that point that if you are looking at um, you know things like correlations and price correlations, you must be aware of when it's not working because no you know no correlation is one hundred percent all of the time so um you know you can buy gold and you can buy the dollar at the moment so that might be a strange one to some but not to me because um you know i already know that you know if you if you go into the nuances of fundamentals it makes sense to to actually buy both uh, at the moment so there you go for different reasons but if you are looking to be a buyer of gold then um uh you know basically you're looking for pullbacks right pull back into a nice decent demand zone somewhere around here or maybe even lower right the lower it goes the more of a bargain it is um, if you are looking for shorts i would rather wait for prices to kind of prove that there is some strong supply before looking at going short anywhere around here so let's see what happens with gold but again the, the path of these resistance should be to the upside anyways guys that's it for this week uh hope you all have a blessed week and uh speak to you all soon take care